Some of you will know that I've recently acquired a Polycraft 300 Tuffy. They get shipped in from Australia and I was pretty excited to give these rotor moulded plastic boats a go. I'm really impressed with these boats and today I'm going to go through the features and compare it to my SIB. Welcome to a video which I know a lot of you have been asking about and this is for a full review of the Polycraft 300 Tuffy. Now this is a tough tender, it's a fully plastic uh, moulded boat and uh, they're brand new to the UK market. Being brand new to the UK market it means not a lot of people have heard about them or even used them. So I was tasked with taking the boat out over a couple of months to go fishing and put it through its paces. Some of you will know that I had owned a SIB uh, and actually I've been so impressed with this Polycraft I've actually now sold my SIB and gone permanently onto a Polycraft but I will tell you why a little bit later as to why I've done that. So the purpose of today's video is to one talk about the Polycraft and about its specifications and also to compare it against a SIB which I feel like is quite a good equivalent boat to compare the Polycraft with. There is going to be pros and cons to both the Polycraft and the SIB. So certain people are going to prefer one or the other and this video is 100% independent. I'm not sponsored by them, however I am now in a brand ambassador, but that does not mean I'm not going to give an independent review. This review is 100% independent and I will be giving you the cons of the Polycraft just as well as the pros. Now the Polycraft 300 Tuffy is a rotor moulded boat made out of polyethylene plastic which is very strong, it's very stable and it also has very little maintenance which is a sort of the thing I wanted when I was looking for an alternative to a SIB. Now being a plastic boat this means that it's slightly flexible which actually gives you a really soft ride which is quite nice and you don't get the sort of bumps as you do with a traditional fiberglass. Now polyethylene has a natural buoyancy which means it'll actually float unaided in water. So if you do take on considerable water, and I believe me I've seen some people which have uh, unfortunately not screwed up the bungs, this boat actually still floats. Um, some people will compare these boats to say, why don't you get an aluminium boat? Well if you fill an aluminium boat up with water or you hit a rock and, it, and you get a hole in it, it's going to sink really quickly. Great thing about the Polycraft as well is there's a UV stabiliser added to that polyethylene material which means your colour is going to stay the same for forever. The length of the Polycraft is just over 3 metres, the draft is around about 1.2 feet, as soon as it touches water it, it, it's floating, it's fantastic, it's really easy to launch on, uh, on sort of estuaries or rivers where you've got really shallow amount of water, it does just get going nice and quickly which is, which is great. The weight of the Polycraft is 108 kilos, which is slightly heavy, so that's a little bit of a disadvantage, but that's it's heavy because it's strong, um, and unfortunately it's just something we have to deal with. Now, the Polycraft can take up to a 15 horsepower motor, and the transom is rated to up to 55 kilos. A lot of boats similar in the market will only take up to about 8 horsepower, so when I was looking at uh, tough boats, uh, this was one of the things that stuck out and was quite a good plus point as you can get a little bit more power and a little bit more speed. Polycraft comes with three storage lockers. There's one large one at the front and there's two smaller ones at the back just under the two seats. So that enables you to put all your tackle, all your anchors, all your safety kit in and still have loads of deck space as well. You can have up to three passengers on board, however I would advise uh, two adults is probably a little bit more sensible. There's also four carry handles where you can add attachments, which I have done on mine. Railblazer attachments are absolutely fantastic on those, and you'll have seen them in all of my previous videos. So this video, I was going to do quite a few pros and cons compared to a SIB, which I believe is the most comparable boat to compare it against. And uh, they're also at the same sort of size uh, comparison. So I've got a list on my phone of pros and cons that I've written. So first of all, we'll do the pros of a, a polycraft and, and the cons of a polycraft, and then we'll go on to do the, the similar thing for, for a sib. So what I found uh, having one of these tough tenders, these polycraft, uh, the pros is obviously they're tough and they're durable. They're really strong. You can drag it along the shingle. You can bang on it. You can bash it, and it and it doesn't and it's not going to break. They're strong and they're tough. 
they're not going to burst like a sieve would. Polycrafts, you can easily add accessories. One of the lovely things that when I got one of these is you can drill into it, you can add your whale nuts, you can add your trifold rivets, you can add all your rail blazer accessories, whatever you choose to use, but rail blazer stuff, which is what we were supplied with for the boat, uh, it goes really well. Another thing with the tough tenders, they're maintenance free. These are UV stabilized boats. You don't get algae growth on them like you do fiberglass. You don't get osmosis on these boats. They're, they're literally maintenance free. You come home, you clean it with water and it's done, uh, which is something I like because I really hate coming up from a fishing session and having to have loads of maintenance to do. So they really are really, really easy boats to keep clean and safe. I like the fact that with the tough tender, you can still launch on shingle, which gives you access to pretty much all the places and all the beaches. Um, one thing I would say, if you are launching from shingle, you do need a winch on your car, or you do need a couple of you to sort of manhandle the boat up the shingle, but it can be done, it has been done, I've done it. It's not much more difficult than a sib, to be honest with you. Um, so it can be launched anywhere, which is great. Obviously a traditional boat, you can't launch everywhere, you need a slipway. I use this boat at Christchurch, which has a which is very very shallow water uh, to begin with, and the draft on this boat is around about a foot. So as soon as it comes off the trailer, you don't need much water for for the boat to to float away, and it's it's quite a nice little feature. And having that low draft also means if you're trolling lures around rocks, you can go really close up to them. You've not got a lot of hull under you. The only thing you've got to be careful is the leg of the engine, but it does mean that you can get nice and close and personal uh, to the rocks, but not not too personal. One thing which did really stick out to me in comparison to a lot of other brands which sell similar plastic boats is on the fact that the Polycraft, you can have up to a 15 horsepower engine as it's rated up to 55 kilos on the transom, which was great because I feel like you can get more speed that way and you can have a little bit more fun. A lot of similar boats at similar sizes, you can only have about a six to eight horsepower engine, which actually, to be honest with you, if you want to go out a long way, is not, is not powerful enough. You really want a 15 horsepower engine on these boats. They take a short shaft as well. So um, if you've got a sib and you were tempted to go over to a Polycraft, you wouldn't need to get a new engine uh, as the short shaft engine will fit perfectly fine and that's what the polycrafts uh, require. So short shaft engine, great stuff. Obviously I said this video was gonna be independent so I am also gonna show you the, some of the, tell you some of the cons which come with a polycraft. It needs to be trailered to be honest with you. It can't really go on a roof rack and it won't go in a van unless you've got a very big van. So it does unfortunately require a trailer which also means you need somewhere to store it at home. So you probably need a driveway or you front of your house on the road but yeah, it, it needs a trailer, unlike a civil sea, which can be packed away. So that is sort of one of the cons of it, is you need a trailer. But I found that when I was using my sib, I went and bought a trailer anyway, because I didn't want to do the pack down every single time. So it didn't really matter for me. And to be honest with you, trailering is actually quite simple. I've not found it any more difficult than, than unpacking and repacking a sib. So that's not been a too big of a problem, but it might be for someone. If you've not got space, obviously you can't have one of these. When using the boat, unfortunately, it doesn't have an automatic drain. So when you're going along and you take on a little bit of water from a large chop or waves or it rains, um, unfortunately, you do need to use a manual bilge pump or your electric bilge pump, whichever one you buy. It is worth mentioning that you only really get water in the boat uh, when it's rough or it's raining. Most of the time on flat calm conditions, you'll get barely any. So in Cornwall, we had some massive swells. They were around about one and a half meters at times, uh, and it was short chop as well. So we did get quite a, a wet ride coming in. Um, we, I was pushing it a little bit. We were going about 10 miles an hour, so hence why we were getting wet. But dropping back to sort of six miles an hour, uh, we didn't get wet at all. So if you want a dry ride, even in chop, um, I would suggest going a little bit slower. But stability wise, it's fantastic, but obviously, that's, that's one of the pros as well. The boat's really stable. Another downside to Polycraft is unfortunately they are a bit expensive. So obviously they're about £2,800 to buy brand new. Uh, whereas a sib, you're looking at sort of £1,100 £1, brand new uh, for a similar sort of sized model. What I would say on that, however, is a sib, you're very likely to encounter little holes which you need to put a patch on. Once you put a patch on a sib, uh, basically you halve the value straight away. You, you really do. People don't want to buy secondhand boats with patches. So the cost kind of on a poddy craft, I think sort of outweighs that. And you could spend four and a half thousand pounds on a kayak these days. So um, I don't think 2,800 pounds is, is, is a shocking price, but it is obviously a bit more expensive to other brands because it has to be shipped in from Australia. But I do think they're quite superior to some of the plastic boats out there. 
Right, so let's move on to sibs. So there are pros of sibs, obviously. Uh, one of the things that if you've not got space, they can pack away to a small bag and they can be stored in a shed or in your house, in a cupboard. So they can be packed away really light. So if you've not got a driveway or, or you don't want to trailer a boat, then obviously that's going to be a big pro for you is the fact that a sib can be sort of packed down to, to not a lot. Sibs, of course, are much lighter. I think my XL 335 Vanguard, I think, weighed possibly about 45, 50 kilos, uh, or, you know, unkitted. So um, it's half the weight of a Polycraft and the rest. So it is quite a bit lighter. Um, and obviously, you can put the wheels on the back as well to help you move it along. Obviously, Sibs, uh, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, they're a lot cheaper. They're, they're half the cost really and, and, a, and a little bit more they're a lot lot cheaper but as i say i think you can lo lose the value on a sib very very quickly as soon as you get a patch and you will get a patch <laughs> believe me i've not known anyone to use and abuse their sib and uh, not get a patch i see it all the time on the forums about patchwork so um i mean i looked after mine and i didn't get any thank goodness but um, i was always very nervous about about getting a patch uh, sibs, uh, they're extremely stable boats. Uh, they they plane really well. They they get on top of the waves nicely because they're full of air. They they just sit so beautifully on big swell and chop. I think stability wise is very similar between my XL Vanguard 335 Sib uh, and the Polycraft Tuffy 300. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't I'd say both are just as good as each other. So moving on to the cons um, of a sieve, obviously I've touched on a few points as we along the way, as I have polycraft as well. Uh, cons, tubes and hooks. For fishing, I was always so, so nervous about getting a hook in the tube. You will eventually. Uh, you take, I take out friends, I'm, oh, I'm so conscious of one of them tubes puncturing. It doesn't take a lot and you do that and it ruins your trip and you've got to go in. Launching on shingle, touching the rocks on ground if you want to troll lures close in if you accidentally hit a tiny little rock it's going to put a hole in it definitely uh, whereas a polycraft it's not going to so that always made me very nervous and that's what i never quite liked about fishing i like fishing for tote sharks i like fishing for big things and uh, having a sib with tu air tubes just didn't fit comfortably with me so personally having tubes is a bit of a con you've got to make sure the pressure's always right and it's always changing and dropping the valves are always leaking and um, I see so many problems with valves and keeping the pressures right. It's not for me. Um, my other point on here was obviously uh, damage and engines patch, but we've already touched on that, so we don't really need to go into that any further. One thing I found really difficult on a sieve as well is to add decent accessories. You've got to glue patches to it, and they're just it's, they're wonky. They're not right for me. Nah, you just can't add rod holders. You can't add fish finders easily and strong in a strong manner on a sib you know you've got to sort of think outside the box if you're adding loads of accessories on your sib and then you want to pack it away it's going to make it awkward to pack away and as you're rolling the boat up it could tear on an accessory i just yeah tubes <laughs> wasn't they weren't for me always concerned about them but what i didn't like was the fact that adding permanent accessories just wasn't that easy and it was a little bit more complicated you had to stick patches on it which didn't sit right with me at all obviously on a polycraft it's tough and it's solid you've got bars to add so you can add accessories really easily Another con on sibs, the space and storage. There isn't any, um, unless you buy under sort of under storage bags on the seats, which I had, but then they're not very accessible. They're, because of the tubes, there's actually less space inside the boat. So my sib was 335 three, uh, meters, 3.35. And the Polycraft Tuffy is only three meters, and I've got more space, 100% in the Polycraft Tuffy 300 than I have in that sieve because the tubes just take up most of the room. So you don't get a lot of uh, floor space on a sieve, if you like. On this Polycraft Tuffy uh, 300, you, you get loads of ample room. Um, me and my dad went out shark fishing. We had a box of, massive box of chum. We had our chum bag, loads of rigs. We had four rods, meat, two adults, uh, food, and we still had space to move around. So um, yeah, floor space is a big con on a sieve. I don't think you get very much for the size of the boats. A con with a sieve as well, the setup time. Obviously, if, you, if you're not trailering it pumped up, you've got to get there. You've got to, if you've got an alley floor, you've got to do the alley floor. You've got to pump it all up. And it, it's a 45 minute to an hour's job to set up your sieve properly and nicely. Um, it took me a long, long time. It wasn't something I liked, hence why I bought a trailer for my sieve. And then I thought, well, I've got a trailer. Why don't I have a sort of slightly more stronger, durable boat? And then I saw Polycraft and I sent them a message and they were very kind to give me a boat to use on loan for a few months to see what I thought. And then obviously I've made my um, 
decision to sell the sieve just purely based on the fact those cons for me just totally outweighed the pros so as i said this this is a hundred percent a video of my own accord i've not been told to say anything i'm giving you a hundred percent my honest opinion so as an overall i just believe if you've got a driveway or you've got space for a trailer you want a more solid, a more durable boat, something which feels more like a boat as well, which you can add your own personal touches to. I do think these tough tenders have a real uh, solid hold of the market here. I think there's a massive market for them. I think sibs are fantastic boats, stability-wise, and if you've not got the space, then they're great. You don't mind spending a little bit more. Definitely have a look at these Polycraft uh, 300 Tuffies. They're fantastic boats. On flat, calm days, you can go out miles. They do allow you to go out in some chop as well. They are very stable. And uh, yeah, I think they're, they're, they're really good boats. The fact that I've sold my sib kind of uh, says it all, really. But I, I sold my sib after, I think, three times of going out of Polycraft. I realized I much preferred it. My dad also much preferred it. And all my friends who I've taken out on that Polycraft and the sib said I much prefer the Polygraph, it just feels a lot more stable. But obviously if you've not got the space and, you've not got, and you can't really trailer it, then uh, obviously these aren't for you. If you've got any questions or anything, please give me a shout and I'll do my best to help you out. They're brand new to the market in the UK, so they're still establishing their sort of hold. So, but they're very interesting. They're exciting little boats and uh, I really cannot wait to do more filming and more adventures on mine. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been interesting. Um, some of you will agree with the points I've made. Some of you won't. That's absolutely fine. We've all got our own opinions. But um, my opinion is I do much prefer my uh, my Polycraft to my old Sib. Just purely based on the fact I can go out easily. I can relax when I'm out there. And I sort of feel like I've got my own boat, if you like.